In Apollo 13, when the command module blew up, the head of mission control told his crew, Failure is not an option. In business, as in life, it's important to know what the real struggle against failure is. I just don't think it's what they want us to think. So, it's the midterm elections in the good old U.S. of A. And all the online chatter is seasoned with fear. Somehow, the powers that were have again convinced nearly everyone that half of us are insane. Well, the other half, obviously. This in a nation of 125 million college graduates. Evidently, not a one having ever taken a course in persuasion. I still have high hopes for them kids, though. Thankfully, in this new world rising, we don't need persuasion or coercion. All we need is clarity about ourselves so that we can create the world we want to live in rather than that hellscape they're building for us out behind the barn. Well, so long as they can keep us pointing our fingers at our neighbors, let's you and him fight. This kind of thing tends to not end well. Around here, a monumental turning point seems to happen every 80 years or so. Many see today as one of these rare and fateful moments. How do you start a Holocaust? Usually with poetry and literary devices, similes comparing your opponent to Hitler, metaphors, you running dog, and above all, words redefined to make them more useful to the persuadist because it leaves them unaccountable and leaves you ashamed of your own thoughts. For instance, a republic designed to protect a minority from the majority like you get with democracy is redefined as democracy so that government can remain unaccountable. A mask once used by the performing artist as a way of revealing the soul is now used to hide it and redefined as a talisman to ward off banishment, leaving the medical profession unaccountable. An army, the defender of the innocents, is redefined as a platform for global conquest by unaccountable generals. The result of just these few changes in the language, no one believes the medical profession or that we can live in freedom or defend ourselves as a people. Without trust in our most basic means of safety and survival, all we find at the base of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is fear. And when these messages are drilled into our heads day and night via every poison form of media there is, the desire to surrender can be overwhelming. So, surrender we must. Oh, not to the fear, of course. How silly would that be? The fear is not even ours. It's just a low level of shared consciousness, so easily manipulated by communicators without conscience and with unlimited budgets. No, we must surrender to higher education, what the light from above is trying to shine into the dark corners of our soul, the parts we don't yet understand. Only when we summon the courage to see ourselves can we let go of paralyzing fear. This is a time when extraordinary feats will be undertaken by ordinary people who have come to know why they're here. After all, we did not choose to be born onto this planet to be used by those with an agenda of death. That agenda is failing everywhere, and there is a new world rising. Must we wait for it to rise from the ashes? Or can we not begin now? The choice we face has never been more sharply defined. Will we remain passive to the demons of fear and blame and violence, just helplessly watching them take over our thoughts and deeds? Or will we stand right where we are and use our businesses to bring light and love and purpose, human to human, ocean to mountain to plains. In this new world, basic needs, security, belonging, esteem, and self-actualization will happen by working with businesses that reflect those values. For no matter what happens to those who accept fear as their fate, there are those already building this new world. Failure is not an option. 
So to the ones who dare to see fear as an invitation to higher awareness and greater achievement, elections are beside the point. The question is, have we finally studied enough history to not repeat it?